But now it's time for another incredibly important part of the show, The Gem yeah. with David Griscom. Please, David, cool. go for it. Yeah, well, just, you know, talking in that kind of international uh, tradition and um, orientation that we're trying to build, I wanted to talk about specifically what's been going on in Argentina over the past couple of weeks because it's a very important story for us in our, in our global uh, project of fighting against this horrible system of exploitation. Um, so in Argentina, for people who don't know, um, there's a new president who was recently elected, um, President Fernandez, who took over after one of just a horrendous uh, kind of right-wing neoliberal uh, institution under uh, President McCree, who very much devastated all the social programs, you know, did the kind of classic neoliberal uh, policies, destroyed the welfare state, destroyed the healthcare system. And obviously at a time like this, uh, those things are desperately needed and they weren't standing on, on good footing to face this coronavirus uh, crisis. So the response um, in Argentina, though, under the new government, under uh, Fernandez's government, has been quite heroic, especially for uh, South America, which has been, you know, really taken over with this horrible uh, right wing wave. And, you know, the coronavirus has really is just really starting to sprout up there and it's looking, uh, you know, very dangerous for a lot of folks. So anyways. Fernandez's response has been a massive stimulus. It's uh, around 2% of the GDP of Argentina, which is huge. It's much larger than pretty much any of the G20 countries. Um, he's ensuring that there are no cuts to essential services for folks. He's yeah. making sure that domestic workers, and this is actually a really great proposal, domestic workers are getting direct payments because um, those people are usually the first ones to be let go in situations like this. All in all, around 8 million people will receive sub subsidies in Argentina. And, you know, he's provided funding to business, much like many other countries have done. But there's been one a simple demand with it. You will not fire your employees. If the government comes in to help you out, you must retain um, your workers. Yep. Now, you know, I mean, it's just like a, you know, night and day kind of situation versus the United States. He also has asked Congress uh, to tax the super rich. And he told uh, the rich in Argentina, uh, boys, it's time for you to earn less. Um, <laughs> Such a good line. That's a good Latin American left. Like that's very Lula. That's very, I, that's very Hugo Chavez. It's like boys. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, I, and I, it, basically, I mean, you know, this is such a, um, a light story in a way because it's a good humane response to a crisis, right? This isn't some kind of, you know, a Soviet government, some kind of radical worker state. I mean, this is just kind of solid human politics in the middle right. of a crisis. And the second part of, of this of this story is hitting on one of the fundamental inequities of the time that we're living in. Uh, that is the system of capitalist exploitation. So while this is all going on, there's been a fight going on behind the scenes with the bondholders. Uh, so Argentina has a significant amount of debt. A significant amount of this debt, by the way, was picked up under Macri. Um, and, you know, they took in like really horrendous IMF bailouts before. And those come with all of these rules. OK, you need to cut spending, you know, cut social services, all those kind of neoliberal policies. But there's also the bondholders. Right. And these bondholders, just so you understand, a vast majority of them are American people, Amer super wealthy American organizations. These are uh, BlackRock, Fidelity, T, T. Rowe Price. Right. These are American institutions. You know, some of their headquarters I can, you know, are, are just down the road in, in New York City. And they are basically saying to the Argentinians who have come, the Argentinians have come forward and say, we cannot make these debt payments at a period of crisis. We need to give the money that we have to the people directly and to go into an emergency spending program uh, to support uh, Argentinian people. Well, the debt holders have come back and they have refused um, to accept these these cuts. So, you know, obviously these are negotiations and obviously Argentina wants to pay as, you know, as little as possible in this time. And obviously the bondholders want to extract as much as they can. But any kind of rational, humane system would recognize that you can't do the necessary stimulus spending to make sure that the entire country doesn't fall into a Great Depression and pay massive amounts of debts back, debts that were um, incurred under a previous administration. You know, so like the, the debt agreement that Argentina put forward was saying that they will continue to make the payments um, just at a smaller rate. They'll only pay a 0.5% uh, interest rates that will eventually raise up to the 5% interest rates, which are very high um, by global standards, by the way. Um, 
and the bondholders have all come together, coalesced together, and they said, no, we will not accept this. So there's a potential that Argentina, you know, could have another debt crisis where they default. And that comes with all these financial penalties. Argentina has had this happen in the past. And basically the blame is being put on uh, the Fernandez government for, you know, not coming to the table to look out for the poor bondholders while their country is, is struggling. And I, I wanted to hit this because obviously it's a very frustrating story. We'll see what happens. Uh, you know, it does. And they seem just that, have just. Know, I just want to say they haven't even straight up defaulted. They're just saying, "Let's go at a lower rate while we deal with yes. a global pandemic and protect our people." Because if you want them to not default too, if you're a, like a rational actor, you, you don't want, want to burden because you want them to have an economy five years. Because these are long bonds, right? These bonds pay out for years and years and years. That's why you invest in them because you're going to get payments back in the long term. If you want to get payments back from Argentina 10 years from now, you should want them to recover their economy right now in the short term. I mean, it's just the constant struggle um, that we see where capitalists, they cannot never look towards the future. It's always what's right in front of them. And what's what will happen, for example, is if they were to get their way, it would be like going back to the original you know history of Argentina and Latin America um, to to that rate, where they just turned the entire continent into an open pit mine to mine silver. and they didn't care about the damage that was being done to the people who lived there and the environmental um, damage either, right? This is the kind of mindset of financial capital, right? Extraction, 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 ignoring all kind of political and human circumstances. And I, I was thinking about this when, uh, you know, you were talking to Cornell West, um, too. I think it's very important that we make this point, too. It's not just a quite look, it's evil. What they're doing is absolutely evil, right? right. But they're not doing waking up in the morning and say, you know, today I'm just going to do some evil stuff to some Argentinians. They're saying, I want to make as much money as possible in the shortest amount of time. Right. And I'm going to leverage as much as I can. And in the system that we live in, the people who have money and the people who are trying to extract from the rest of the world have tremendous amounts of power. So for countries like Argentina and also, for example, what's going to be happening in Africa over the next few years um, with with this kind of the debt crisis that's bubbling up there as well. They have a lot of power to enact capital strikes. These countries need funding from the from the West, from the global north. They can make them pay outrageous interest rates. They have a lot of leverage and power um, over these systems. And that's something too that we need to be watching out for as organizations like the IMF and these international organizations start giving loan, um, you know, forgiving some debt, offering loans at very low interest rates. We need to make sure as, as an international community, as left-wingers, um, that those for Forgive that forgiveness that's coming from the international community isn't just going to pay back the bondholders because right. that's very likely what will happen. Right. Uh, we need to have everybody at, at the table. But, you know, what these people basically want to do with the bondholders' interest is, is they have this class unity. They understand that they can leverage um, this kind of extraction. Domestically in Argentina, what would that mean? That would mean further cuts to social safety nets so that more people, uh, capitalists can come in and privatize as much as possible. And for capitalists, providing service to people is a secondary aspect, right? What matters more is um, extracting as much profit as possible. That's the worst kind of model to have during a pandemic. It's the worst kind of model to have during a, you know, a global health crisis. Right. Um, so, you know, this endless search for profit, it's, it's the grease of the wheels of some of the most destructive and, and inhumane system that we've seen um, in, in, in human history. But until we tame that motivation, until we create systems that don't run on the profit motive, we are going to continue to see these crises come up over and over and over, despite our very human um, feelings of wanting to help our neighbor, help our communities, the kind of democratic feeling um, that that Fernandez is representing here is being, it will be, you know, is facing this, uh, this economic logic that is completely out of touch with the reality and the human society that we want to live in. Yeah, that's perfect. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.